Good morning, everybody. It has finally cooled off a little bit. We're no longer experiencing near 80 degree temperatures in February. And because of that, we're gonna do a little bit of salamandering. Today, we're gonna check up on the Eastern Newt population that lives in this pond. Eastern Newts are kind of interesting because they are one of the only salamanders we have that habitually breeds in wetlands that are full of predatory fish. And that's presumably because they're toxic enough, they don't have to worry about getting eaten by the fish. Either way, very interesting. Newt should be the only salamander species that's permanently breeding in this pond. There might be some stuff that occasionally ends up in here, like particularly two-line salamanders, other very generalistic species. I'm just going to do a couple of scoops out of here today, get some of this invasive vegetation in there. I'm not sure what species this is, but it's not native. I do think it is actually beneficial for a lot of the wildlife in this pond, though. All right, we're getting bold with this one. Might have to end up getting way wetter than I want today, which would suck, but that's how this goes sometimes, especially dip netting. All right, we got a good wad of muck this time, and I see that is a big tadpole. Jesus, look at this thing. <laughs> that is cool. All right, not a newt, but we got something. Let's make sure there's nobody else in here. All right, and I know there's gotta be some newts in here somewhere. You can see all the movement in the net. It's just a matter of getting underneath the vegetation enough for that stuff to end up in here. And once again, we have a whole lot of tadpoles, no newts. I just don't think I'm getting into the vegetation good enough. Ooh, newt. There we go. All right. Just one. I mean, we haven't even had a double newt scoop yet. Normally I come down here and I take one big scoop and it's got multiple newts. All right, so I'm getting the impression from my last scoop that the newts are kind of higher in the water column. So I'm just gonna do like a top level, top level one of these and see if I rustle any out. I mean, it worked for tadpoles, holy crap. We're getting our technique refined in a big way. And this is the most, most tadpoles I've gotten in one load. Look at that. A newt. I almost died for it, but this one's beautiful. Look at that. Holy cow, that's what we're looking for. Is that a flower on you? He's got a flower on his butt. Snail. I wonder if that's an invasive fish, Tad. Give me some more newts. We got one. There we go. That one's pretty. Looks like just one. Some tads. This guy's very spotty. Look at that. That's their thing is ponds full of lots of aquatic vegetation. So we're going to go for the most nudie looking sections and see what comes out. I can see I already got at least one in that scoop. Hopefully I didn't throw him out on accident. I saw his feet. Where is he? Oh, there he is. It's crazy how small they are. I mean, that's a reproductively mature adult. All right, I just want a nice multi-newt scoop. You know what I'm saying? Like, just a, just a couple of them. Oh, we got one, some tads. This one looks like it could be our, our big adult female though. Oh no, we got multiple newts. Here we go. Our first multi-newt scoop. Got a pair, looks like a, well, no, that one's just a, he's got a slow, swollen cloaca, but he's very fat, so maybe he's just been eating well. Make sure we didn't miss any in here.
There we go. A nice productive final scoop, big newt, lots of tadpoles. I lied. I can't stop. Dip netting is like a drug. It's like flipping. It's very interesting. Um, I didn't notice this when we first captured them, but I'm noticing it looking at them. Uh, there's a mixture of, of animals in here that, that look more like efts, and I wonder if those animals have just more recently metamorphosed into this adult breeding phase. Where are the ladies? I don't think they've arrived yet. Mm. Either that or we just didn't get lucky and catch one. Uh, they all look like they have or are developing big fantails. And uh, some of them have those gnarly back legs, which are, I really don't know what the technical term is for what's going on there. Keratinized, I think, maybe. <laughs> like they develop like these pads on their, on their feet for gripping. This one kind of looks like a female, this one in the back. Yeah. She's very fat, yeah. but she has a swollen cloaca. So the, I guess the question is, do female newt cloacas swell up a little bit, or is that just how they always are? So you'll notice that these guys are actually coming up and gulping air, and that's because they don't have gills. These are fully air-breathing, uh, fully aquatic adult salamanders. It's kind of weird. And that you can see in the front there is the big, extra magnificent, fan-tailed, mature male. And I think what's going on is the vast majority of these, maybe that one that just swam to the front there could be a female. She does have a swollen cloaca, but she also looks gravid and doesn't have that super developed... Uh, that fantail like a lot of the other newts in here do. And truthfully, this is kind of, it's enlightening to me to see this because it's making me realize how little about these things I actually know, um, looking at this group of animals. That one that's kind of in the front, I think that's a different one that also kind of is looking like a female now. So maybe we do have females in here. And I was just a little thrown off by the fact that their cloacas are uh, swollen. I mean, every single one of these salamanders has a swollen cloaca but only some of them have the super developed fantail. Very weird salamanders and something that if I didn't come out here and dip net for them once a year, I'd never see them, even though they're very common here in my own backyard. Um, without dip netting, we'd never find them. Every once in a while, we'll see an eft walking around or undercover, but for the most part, we wouldn't know they were here if we didn't uh, get out here in the winter and scoop with the net. Really, if you have anything that resembles a wetland uh, that you can access this time of year and you wanna go see if there's newts in it, that's uh, a great time. You can also shine around at night and you can see them if you don't have a dip net. But they're very, very fun salamanders to watch and very unique and obviously gorgeous. Like, look at those big tails. It's so cool. And each one is completely different looking from the others in its own way. All right, come on, dudes. Let's go back to the pond. Dudes and dudettes. You can see just how ungainly they are out of water. They look so derpy compared to how graceful they are under the water. All right, here you go, dudes. So as you could see, there is no shortage of of tadpoles in this pond, and I think these are mostly gonna be bullfrog and green frog tadpoles. I'm not positive which these are, but I'm I'm pretty confident it's one of the two just because of their size. And obviously bullfrogs are the bigger of the two, so bullfrogs can be tadpoles for multiple years. They look pretty crazy as tadpoles, actually. So I do think these are all various stages of the same frog, whatever it may be. Um, I'm leaning green frog. I know bullfrogs and green frogs, I think, can have multi-year larvae phases, but you can see there's it's a random monster. little fish in there <laughs> that I scooped up at some point, but we'll put these guys back too. My camera just won't focus on him. But that right there is some manner of very cool water bug, a water beetle. I didn't realize just how green he was till we got him in the tank and under the light. 
Look at those furry back legs. That's just a fascinating animal. I'm sure they can give you a pretty nasty bite like most water beetles. And these guys are dragonfly larvae. Very, very abundant invertebrates in pretty much any aquatic ecosystem, but good food for almost everything that lives in there. Fish, turtles, you name it. This guy probably even. Man, that thing is cool. It's probably hard for you guys to see just how big it is too, but it's, it's not tiny. I mean, look at that. It's about, you know, almost an inch long maybe. <laughs> Very cool looking though. And can't be super common in here since we only turned up one of them. I know I've seen them a lot before, but I can't ever think of a time seeing one in this particular pond before. All right, everyone. Well, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this pond dip netting video. I definitely need to make more videos at this pond because it is just such an awesome resource to have at my disposal. Very cool to get a few newts out of here today. I think we had like nine or ten. It didn't really feel like that when we were dip netting. It felt like I was really working for him, but it was a pretty solid newt haul today. Normally, I just dip net in this one corner and I get three or four and stop. That is probably going to be the end of this one. It's going to be a quick episode so I can get two episodes out this week. I'm going to try to do as many multi-episode weeks this year as we can. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time where we'll hopefully be out looking for snakes.